You may have first heard of animal experimentation in elementary school, as the lights were dimmed after lunch, and your teacher read the tale of Mrs. Frisbee and the Rats of Nim, a book about a group of super rats who escaped from the confines of a government laboratory. We were captured, put in cages, and sent to a place called Nim. There were many animals there, in cages. They were put through the most unspeakable tortures. To satisfy some scientific curiosity. Or maybe it was the space chimp saved by Matthew Broderick in Project X. Or Reese Witherspoon's March on Washington in Legally Blonde 2. Oh my god. It's always made a good story. Animals escaping cruel experimenters to live out their lives with loving movie stars. Reality for animals in labs doesn't end so well. The nightmarish lies that hundreds of thousands of dogs, cats, monkeys, and other animals endure end hideously, with little hope of a hero coming to the rescue. There's only you and the decisions that you make every day that can change the lives of animals lost in some of the most horrifying dungeons ever designed by humanity. I remember the very first time I saw inside a cosmetics household product testing lab. There was a little gap in the bottom of one of these large windowless sheds. And I lay down on my back and I looked underneath. And what I could see through the crack in the, between the door and the ground were just rows and rows and rows of um, cages, stainless steel cages. And you could see monkeys, you could see rabbits. Um, guinea pigs, rats, as far as the eye could see, it was one of the most shocking revelations I've ever seen because it really truly was a concentration camp. The tests used for everyday household products would not seem out of place in a medieval torture chamber. There's the Dre's eye irritancy test, which involves dripping substances into the eyes of rabbits to measure, quote, progressive deterioration. Or the lethal dose test, in which substances such as oven cleaner or nail polish are pumped through tubes into the stomachs and lungs of animals until a percentage of them die. Even some pet food companies, such as Iams, conduct cruel tests on animals. At Iams Labs worldwide, dogs who have been mutilated in experiments or driven mad from confinement suffer through needless tests, including one in which muscle tissue is hacked out of dogs' thighs. The tragedy of each of these painful tests is that there are non-animal tests available. Scientists have developed artificial skin and bone, and can now even test vaccines without the use of animals. As Gordon Baxter, co-founder of Pharmagene Laboratories, a company that uses only human tissues and computers to develop and test drugs, says, if you have information on human genes, what's the point of going back to animals? Deep inside Columbia University, past the law school where Franklin Delano Roosevelt studied and the former classrooms of investment guru Warren Buffett, there's a primate lab that would seem right at home in a Stephen King novel. In a steel cage in this lab lives a monkey named 88N182. She has languished there since 1994. A heavy pipe was recently implanted in her skull for the sole purpose of inducing stress so that the experimenter could then study the connection between stress and the menstrual cycle. Down the hall lived Handsome, a baboon scarred and tattooed following a hideous experimental surgery. In a room nearby are pregnant baboons wearing metal backpacks that pump nicotine and morphine into their bodies and the bodies of their fetuses. A continent away, in Jerusalem, lives Malish, an inmate of Hebrew University, whose skull was cut in half while he was still conscious in order to insert electrodes into his brain to test his visual memory. During the experiment on Malish, one of the experimenters was quoted as saying, We did all kinds of nonsense, simply so we can do something. One of the saddest aspects of the torture inflicted by charities that still experiment on animals is that it is paid for by well-meaning people who have absolutely no idea that their $25 checks are paying for such things as sewing the eyes of kittens shut, burning live dogs, and cementing circuitry into the skulls of cats. The kitten seen in this footage was born in Boys Town National Research Hospital. Her skull was open, nerves to her ears were cut, and she was placed screaming back into a cage with her mother, who could do nothing to help her. 
Wanting not to hurt animals doesn't mean you can't help people. Some of the largest and most successful charities in the world, such as the Easter Seals, the Avon Breast Cancer Crusade, and the Children's Burn Foundation, are making major progress in curing disease and improving the lives of thousands without any animal tests whatsoever. They help without hurting. It's so easy to live cruelty-free. You just have to make the decision to try it. And then it becomes easier every day. There are sections of the supermarket or the pharmacy you just don't go to. But if you're looking, the first thing to do is get the little cruelty-free list. And that tells you which companies don't test. Like Gillette, you couldn't get much bigger than that. They don't test on animals. They use more sophisticated ways to test. And then you find the bad guys like Procter & Gamble and you avoid all their products. It's just very easy. I say go to your bathroom cabinet, go to your kitchen cabinet, open the doors, take all that stuff out, look it through once. If it's bad, send it back and get a complete refund. You can do that and tell the company why you're doing it. 